Since I plan to create battle reports on a few different systems, I want to build a collection of lists that I can pick and play with. In this case, it's for Age of Fantasy Skirmish by One Page Rules. These are armies I don't intend to keep adding to, but will be a one-off project. Because of this, I might as well try some fun, experimental stuff. So I use the army builder to create a list, then print it off the models. I'll prime them with Vallejo Grey Surface Primer and then give them a base coat of Game Colors Ultramarines Blue. Next I add a Zenithal Highlight with a lighter blue and for this I chose Sky Blue by Vallejo's Model Color. I apply this from more of a side angle, still definitely above but maybe 45 degrees to the left of the model. Now I start with the airbrush because it makes it quite quick and easy but I'm also going to use a dry brush on one of the minis just to see which technique turns out better here. Okay, so right now it might not be obvious why I'm using blue, as the minis won't have much blue on them at the end. Well, in my opinion, one of the fun things about contrast is being able to vary the colours using a pre-shade method like Slap Chop or Zenithal Prime. So, for the experimental part. I'm looking for the most vibrant yellow I have, so I settle on Game Colours Sun Yellow. Next I use an anti-Zenithal, reverse Zenithal, bottom up Zenithal. Whatever we call it, I want to try this as a way to make it look like some fiery hell is lighting them from below. The idea here is that using contrast and thinned paints, the pre-shade will cool down the base colours on top, but make them brighter, warmer and more vibrant on the underside. At this point I should mention I didn't bother to test out the idea first, so you'll be learning with me whether this actually works. Part of the joy of this hobby is having a random idea and trying it out. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but either way you've learned something and expanded your pool of ideas. Or pool of what doesn't work, I guess. That's not to say you should always dive headfirst into an experiment with a centerpiece model or something a bit more important, but for a short term project like this I think it's fine and quite a lot of fun to just try something random. So I use the same ethos on the dry brushed model, applying lighter blue on the top areas and then yellow on the underside. Now using this method it's important to move the brush in a purposeful direction, kind of in the direction that the light would be hitting it, so you only hit the edges on that side, thus creating the idea of light hitting the model from that direction. Finally all models get a white dry brush. I find edge highlighting kind of tedious, so I'll always use this step to appreciate to try and just cheat my eye out of this if possible. I try and keep it light so that I don't cover too much of my blues and yellows, but you know, just kind of picking out the edges to accentuate. Now let's start using contrast paints to pick out the basic colours. I start with Citadel's Iandan Yellow Contrast straight from the bottle for anything that's going to be gold. One Page Rules has a style where they always use non-metallic metal or NMM, so I want to try this style. I use a lot of gold on the models because I feel like Demons of Lust would be indulgent bastards. Straight away I can see the pre-shade has done a good job and the yellow on the top areas is quite a lot cooler than it would naturally be. My preferred method with contrast is to bunch a load in the mini and then wick it off with a clean brush. This kind of gives it a chance to like run into the recesses and then wicking it back off avoids the pooling. Next I'm going to pick out any of the skin areas on those demon babes with Volupus Pink from Citadel. I'm going straight from the bottle again. I carefully pick out anything that looks like it should be a skin colour. I move on to these awesome snake hyena things with shyish purple. This time I thinned it down with contrast medium as it's quite a dark colour. Finally, for skin tones I use Flesh Terrors Red on the Furies. I want to make them pink along with the regular dudes, but I thought it would be interesting to start from a slightly different tone in the recesses. This one I'm also thinning with Contrast Medium as it's another one that covers quite well. Now I want the hair to look kind of oily and slick, so I use Black Templar Contrast for this, and I'm leaving it as it comes so it really fills in that hair. On the cloth bits I use Dark Oath Flesh. I'm not too sure what I want to do here, so I settle with making them look a bit leathery for now. I carry the scheme over to all of them, doing the saddles and the loincloth thing on the Furies. 
Okay, now I've set out all my base colours, I'm going to try some very simple, very lazy, very easy, non-metallic metal. I'm using a pure white here and lightly dry brushing the edges and corners of all the gold bits. Here I should point out that I've left some areas of their base coat in pre-shade. This is because I want these to read as like a steel or a silvery metal. That would reflect whatever ambient light is around, so as that's what the pre-shade was meant to represent, it should help towards that quite nicely. I guess we'll see. Now in simple tones, metallics read to the eye as such for two reasons. Firstly, because they have much darker darks and lighter lights. Secondly, is what I like to think of as a shimmer effect. This is where a flat surface will have a gradient from dark to light and sometimes even back again. So my next step is to darken the recesses even further but pick an end of each part to focus on. I take Citadel's Reichland Flesh Shade and put it into the recesses, focusing it at one side of each part. Now I go slightly mad and decide to try for an even more painterly colour effect. Gold is yellowy and the shading is bluey, and these two colours make green. Actually gold does sometimes have quite a lot of green tones in it anyway, depending on how kind of warm or cold it is, so it does make sense to shade it with green, kind of. So to shade the gold where I want the lighting to read as colder, I grab my Bale Tan Green from Citadel again, and I use this to shade any upward facing areas. Again, I pick my surfaces carefully to get that shimmer effect. We're on to highlights and I start with some full grim pink for the skin. I water this down a fair bit so it doesn't fully cover our other tones that we've established and then I just pick out the areas I want to draw attention to, such as the scales of the snake bodies and the arms and the face. Oh yeah, at one point I also get a bit bored of doing it carefully and switch to a targeted dry brush. Uh, laziness. I use Citadel's Jean Stealer Purple for the skin on the mounts. At this point I feel like I'm covering the pre-shade underglow, so I use this sparingly and mostly in the mid-tone areas, avoiding the darkest or lightest bits so that they still read as the cold colours or the warm colours. I think I'll probably come back and mix the purple with some yellow later just to highlight it back up. As you can see, this way seems to work quite well for shifting the look of the base colour without actually changing our highlight areas. I'm feeling the non-metallic metal isn't quite there yet, so I go back to my Iandan yellow to tint some of the edges, leaving the pure white in some select areas. I'm also feeling that green was perhaps a bit bold and want to tint that back down if I can. As I said, this process is a bit experimental and it was worth trying. Staying with the NMM, I use some Dragonoff Nightshade from Citadel to shade the silver areas in the shimmer pattern again. Then I jump back to the gold to do this with Flesh Tear as Red. I decided the darks in the warmer surfaces didn't really quite go deep enough, so I wanted to add some deeper tones, that's why I've used this. So I carefully add some contrast into the gaps and recesses. This is where I feel the NMM gold really starts to come to life, with a rich shade. As well as using the natural behaviour of the paint to shade recesses, I also shade flat areas by applying a small amount, and then cleaning the brush and feathering it out to get a gradient. I think with these steps I've dulled them down a bit much, so I just go with one last dry brush pass with pure white, sticking to the very edges and corners and keeping that shimmer pattern. Okay, one last thing, I go back to my Iandan yellow just to tint down some of the white that I've caused with that last dry brush. This process has involved a lot of back and forth because I'm drying things out, but I'm finally happy with the tones I'm getting for this gold, so don't worry, that'll be that. Next I do some more skin dry brushing with full grim pink on the Fury Demon. Now I'm going for a light tinting layer here, but 
check out coming up here, I kind of forget to remove any paint from the brush and just splotch it all over the wing. It looks terrible. Don't do that. This is uh, as much a guide on what you shouldn't do as what you should. The demons aren't looking as lit as I'd like them to be, so to fix this I use some more Drakenhof Nightshade on the upward facing areas. This darkens those areas so the underlighting will show up better. I do this to a big chunk of the beasts, a decent amount of the regular dudes, and feather it on the wings to create cool shadow. Now I brighten up the underside further by mixing yellow with the Gene Stealer purple and dry brushing it on the beasts. Now I'm happy with where the models are, so I want to get some colour on the bases. Now, in my eagerness to be finished, I seem to have misplaced some of the footage of this part. I'll tell you what I did and you can just take my word for it. I started with Ushabti Bone by Citadel and then a quick wash with Seraphim Sepia, also Citadel. Because the minis themselves are lit from underneath, I wanted some source of that light, so I decided to do a bit of an effect. I used some Liquitex white ink in some of the cracks. This stuff is good because it's really vibrant and it runs quite nicely into gaps. Then I washed those bits with Citadel's Cassandora Yellow. I also went back at this part and painted all the cloth parts green because the brown colour wasn't doing it for me. I highlighted the base with a quick dry brush of Game Colours Bone White and then Model Colours Off White. Finally, I wanted to re-establish the glow, so I added a smaller amount of the white ink back into the very central parts of the glow. All in all, I think this worked quite nicely. My easy NMM became a bit convoluted and next time I'll just dry brush, yellow, dark colour, dry brush again. I also wish I'd done a few more passes with the yellow when pre-shading to really brighten it up. Because this is meant to be kind of a speed painting, easy method, I didn't want to have to spend hours later on glazing awesome yellow glows onto the model. So the pre-shade really needed to be more pronounced to show through. I do think it's a cool effect though, so when I do my Demons of Change, I'm definitely going to play around with it some more. Well, I hope you enjoyed this not so much tutorial as experimentation. This hobby gives us such a range of methods to try out and I hope you've been inspired to try something too.